Is there a role for the use of, you know, passing chords, reharmonization technique? A lot of the stuff that we tend to <laughs> heavily focus on on our channel. You know, for the up and coming musicians, we're just like, all the songs doing my church or diatonic, one, four, five, you know, or doing a six. Why do I need to learn all of these chromatic dominants and drop twos? And I view, I view every technique, every every concept, every theory as just a, another tool on my tool belt or another color to paint with. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't mean I've lost the ability to paint, to paint black and white, but if I need a particular shade of purple, you know, <laughs> I can pull that out. And I have this drop to crazy voicing that I can pull out when I need it. It's important for us to know uh, and understand our audience um, as musicians. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is <clears throat> to always know who we're playing for and the context. Um, miking a choir. You know, back in the day, you know, miking was, was a little simpler. But now, even at, even at your larger churches um, where they do still have choirs, there still is a group of a worship team singers or a group of singers that sing out in front on the mics. Um, to, and so it's almost like, and I, I, don't, I, I hate this, so, but for the lack of better terminology, it's almost as if the choir becomes like a prop, like a background piece to the music because you aren't hearing them as prominent as you are hearing the, the worship team singers that are standing in front of the choir. Yeah. And all those records, what I've seen is, yeah, th there, there's a group of singers, there's a congregation of singers there, but it, not to sound dark or negative, but it feels more of like, it's for the look, it's for the image, because well, when I listen to the sound of it, I'm hearing the singers that are actually on the mics. Um, and maybe deep buried in the background, uh, or in the quiet spots, they might bring up the other, you know, the other the congregation mics. So I think I think there's there's that issue, um, just being heard. Yeah. With the emphasis, we added more instruments, more tracks, loops, drum. You know, church didn't used to be like that. You know, the drummer back in the day, uh, you know, he wasn't playing all the drums. You know. It was a bass drum and a snare drum, really, if you want to go back far enough. And so the choir was easy to be heard. Mm -hmm. um, but, and they played on grand pianos, you know, because, you know, so everything had to be softer, but that, that's not the case today. So I think that's a real influence. Um, and, then, and then coupled with the really big emphasis on praise and worship in the church, I think the function of the choir's uh, of moving um, and lastly, I would say this, a lot of your churches have done away with the choir loft uh, and, and putting video walls in place of the choir loft. Yeah. I've seen a lot of your larger churches that aren't really traditional um, in nature uh, have gone to that route. Big screens where they display different shots of the congregation or display lyrics and stuff like that. Yep, definitely seeing that. Yeah. You know, it's it, it's interesting you talk about the issue of miking a choir. And I talked about our church and, and you know, we're, we're very uh, choir oriented. That's a challenge for us. And believe it or not, we actually track our choir prior to uh, each service for mic because of the miking issue. Even our like down to the students and kids. Anytime we're gonna sing, everything has to be tracked just so that we can pump it up to compete against all of the electronic instruments that are there. And so, yeah, you're right. That is that is a huge that is a huge problem. Um but I mean <laughs> I don't I don't think that's limited to just uh choirs. Everybody's tracking vocals at this point. And so mm. Any thoughts on that, Sean? Because you, you what, I'm, I'm, what's going on in your church if you're still there? No, we've done away with the. Um, so I, I play for two churches. The one of them, 
the choir is we're struggling. <laughs> <laughs> you have a big channel, so I I have to be very diplomatic here. <laughs> We're, you know, they're doing okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we we're not growing by leaps and bounds, is what I'll say. But in, in terms the of other, the, the core um, direction, is is the choir still a pretty big function, in, or, or that's what they're planning on it's doing? Just, it's just, I mean, it's because it's traditional. Okay, it's more traditional. It's tra- traditionally was expected, for, you know, for a Baptist church. My other church, they did away with the choir. But, but to, you know, what I was thinking to my other point, though, who are the dominant individuals? See, the choirs weren't ever just kind of like when we say Hillsong, we're just saying Hillsong, like as a, you know, as a big unit. But traditionally choirs, it would always be the dominant individual. We're talking about Richard Smallwood, Donald Lawrence, Kirk Franklin, Kirk Carr, Hezekiah, Ricky Diller. They're at the face of their choirs, right? And so... So when I said that the reduction, I was saying, I was trying to think now, so who would be the dominant, who would be the people now who are leading in terms of with their choirs, right? I think the biggest thing we had recently was Kanye, but he's not a, you know, Kevin not, Simmons here in Atlanta. Okay. So Kevin, he's still, and is he, uh, he's released on um, what? He's they released the uh, third round, the, the record, or uh, they signed with Hezek, Hez is out. Uh, that's right. That's Abel. right. And so they just released, that's right. released the record. That's right. But he's he's probably the biggest choir out, I think. Probably right now. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of in terms of the names, I was just trying to think of. I, I was in my head. I was trying to, because one of the things that we struggle with is trying to find newer songs. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, Sean, we we tired of singing the same old songs. So you know, give us some new songs. And I just find it I, for me. I'm just kind of finding it more difficult to find the newer choir songs that are just strictly choir as opposed to, so that's the reason I asked that as opposed to um, like new praise and worship songs. Yeah, we, we got you. Right. But when it came to just kind of the traditional choirs that they can sing, I'm not talking about that are not overly complicated either. Right. Because as we know, a lot of times when the, with the more complicated music gets, it loses its uh, I'll say mass market appeal. Yeah. So I think Davin was the one who mentioned that just the kind of the simplicity, you know, praise and worship. I think I I personally think that's probably where it's moving towards more. I know that there's a choir still there, but I'm thinking it's moving more towards there. And if that happens, I think it to your original question, um, Warren, I think that the traditional gospel choir will morph like uh kind of like Corey was saying, we'll morph a little bit. Um, I think it's going to move more towards the the traditional, the C- more the like CCM a... Style? I don't even want to say CCM. I'm trying to think of what, what it looks like. Um, I will say it's easier, though. Let's look at optics. It's easier to lead a congregation with a praise team. You know, you can you can have different voices, you could, the way you position them and you know, you have some of your praise team who can kind of get a different section of your audience. And with a traditional choir, it's choir to director, right? It's not choir to audience. It's okay, choir yeah. to director. The dynamic is different. There's more so worship. I'm, There's more yeah, I, I, so I'm thinking it's just the it's just the worship style and that that's can moving. You, can you explain that a little bit more? What do you mean by choir to director versus choir to audience? I mean, like, for, so for me, like traditionally, we teach our choir you got to watch your director, right? So, so it's not necessarily, even though I think deep down the choir knows we're kind of ministering out. Um, but I've noticed that they, you know, the way we've trained choirs, at least from the beginning, and it, like for me is we've trained them. You need to look at that director. So that director yeah. is holding that note. You got to look at him. If he goes here, you go here. Like, so we teach our choirs to operate basically as a unit. Right. And I don't, see that that's the same format in terms of the praise team it's that more definitely. like a worshipful thing we know our parts but we are we're in free worship kind of a thing that's um now you guys can disagree i'm just telling you oh, how i totally I, agree i totally agree how i've seen it um I and totally so agree. i think that's just kind of where churches could be moving a little bit culturally yeah. i don't know what you guys think about that what do you think devin because I, I that's just from saying what i have seen 
Um, I don't know if your car is like that or not, but this is kind of telling my observations. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it a little bit, but with our art, so with our church, you know, we and and the church I was at prior, which was very choir oriented, um, there were times where in the service, the choir is focused on the director because that's like the anthem for their day, right? Like mm-hmm. something to lead the congregation to reflectively think about some subject before the message. But then there are times when the choir knows, hey, we're leading the congregation. And so there isn't that, I'm. you're looking at me as a director or you're focused on me as a director, but you're focused on the congregation. Oh. And I saw that at my last church oh. and I saw that at this, <laughs> this church here. Um, and and just for some context, I didn't grow up in a traditionally like black church with a choir. Um, by the time I came around, praise and, uh, praise and worship was the thing, and the choir just sang a special on Sunday mornings. The choir wasn't the main feature. Um, and so I don't, I don't fully think I understand the context of choir within the black church as being the predominant uh, worship leading like mechanism. You, you, so, so just for some context. So anyway, that's my context for 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 understanding choirs. So, okay, I got a a, a pivot question. So, seeing that gospel music, you know, or the gospel and <laughs> CCM fusion that's happening right now has simplified significantly compared to just a decade ago. The stuff that you know, Kirk Carl and you know, all those guys were doing. Is there a role for the use of, you know, passing chords, reharmonization technique, a lot of the stuff that we tend to <laughs> heavily focus on on our channel, you know, for the up and coming musicians who are just like all the songs doing my church or diatonic one, four, five, you know, or throwing a six. Why do I need to learn all of these chromatic dominants and drop twos? And does it doesn't serve a place in my church so is it is it necessary for me to learn that stuff well you know what are you guys thoughts on that because as we're educators we kind of have to be looking into the future because a lot of our the people we're preparing or active church musicians are people who plan on being active so is that also something that's dying the need for this elaborate harmonic depth of information being a pianist in a gospel church or just any church at this point well i'll I'll say this um (laughs) i view i view every technique every every concept every theory as just a another tool on my tool belt or another color to paint with Mm -hmm. um it doesn't mean i've lost the ability to paint the paint black and white but if i need a particular shade of purple you know, I can pull that out. And I have this drop to crazy voicing that I can pull out when I need it. Yeah. And so I think um, I think there is always a need uh, to, to push harmonically, even if it's not in specifically required. Um, but if, if but historically, um, music. So think, think about the Beatles. The Beatles introduced certain chords that hadn't been heard before, even though their their music, for the most part, is typically diatonic. But they introduced certain chords that changed, and then everybody shifted and started doing that. And so, if we only if we only learn up to the level of the music, then we can't progress the music. And so, I think it's important that we have the tools, and then whether we use them or not, or how we use them or not, um, is definitely up to your discretion. And then the second thought I had is historically music has always been about ebbs and flows, action and reaction, you know? Uh, and so I, I think these tools are necessary because I, it's not going to all be one, four, five, every single song for the next 30 years. You know, it's, it's going to shift back. There's going to be an ebb back. So that's basically where I was heading. You see, you think it's going to come back around. I, that was happening in the 90s, the way passing chords was like a staple in all those songs. Yeah. Like you, you will never hear like a, a song that didn't involve some form of two, five, one dominant passing. Yeah. Now these songs aren't composed with that in it. 
yeah. you'd have to actively add it. And that was one of the a lot of the questions I'm getting lately is I like the way you use this passing chord in this, you know, water friend we have in Jesus. But how do I use this on like this hill song tune? <laughs> That's a lot of, you know, people are like, okay, I'm learning all these cool chords, but how do I make it functional for these CCM or non gospel type song? Yeah. Now, I don't think I don't I don't, I don't think history will repeat. Um, I just think it'll rhyme. So it won't be exactly the same. Uh <laughs> But it will be, I think we'll, we'll come back for a need for those, but it, it'll, it'll be slightly different. But I think it, it's still needed. What do you other guys have to say? <laughs> Any thoughts on that? Because we know, Sean, you're the master of, you know, <laughs> transcriptions with yeah, getting you know, deep I have into a lot the Corey, Henry, the Corey but, Henry chords and all of that stuff. So I, I, I you asked a loaded question, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's Pick whichever a, part you wanted to tackle. You don't have that's to. That's a loaded question. Man, all that, that's a good question. I mean, but I mean, and it's it strikes at the heart of what, what we're all doing, which yep. is teaching. You know, uh, you know, one of the things I was thinking about though is that it's important for us to know uh, and understand our audience um, as musicians. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is <clears throat> to always know who we're playing for and the context. 